I searched to the earth for something that could satisfy Morning everybody. Yeah, you guys are doing it. Let's stand up. Good morning, Acton Methodist Church. Y'all grab a seat. My name is Wade, and I'm lead pastor of the church. If you are a guest of ours today, we're so glad that you are here. If you're here with us all the time, we're so glad that you are here. Also, if you worship with us online, we're so glad you're here, and we just all want to say hey. 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 Glad you're here. Uh, real simply, here's our expectation for you this morning. Our expectation is that you come into contact with the presence of the living God. I don't know what your expectation is, but that is our expectation of you. And you need to know that we back that expectation up with action. You need to know that every pew that you're sitting in this morning was prayed over and anointed uh, between 7.30 and 8 this morning. So while you were still sleeping or while you were trying to figure out whether or not you were going to go to church, 
there were people that were praying that you would be here. And not that you would be here, but that you would encounter the presence of the living God. So I don't know what you're expecting, but that's what we are expecting. So we're so glad that you are here. When you walked in, you got a GPS, and the GPS is simply a grow, pray, and study guide. It doesn't have an order of worship. We're gonna trust that the Lord's gonna work through that whole thing. And so when you look at your GPS, that's your roadmap to help you in your walk with Jesus. If you are not on a roadmap to help you in your walk with Jesus daily, you're just wandering and God's got more in store for you than that. So we want you to take that home and, and use it. We'll also put it up on church Facebook page so you can see it every day. You'll also see on the back that there's some things that we want you to be aware of, like there's a new partner dinner tonight. So if you've been a guest of ours for a while and you really wanna know what makes our heart tick and what it is that we are about and what it means to join this church family, we'd love for you to come tonight at five. In E101, there'll be big banners outside so you'll know where to go. We'll feed you. We'll also take care of your kids if you have kids. So come on. You can see what's going on. If you wanna join the church at that point, you can. Or if you just wanna get more information and chew on it, that's fantastic as well. But just keep that in mind. You'll also see when you walk out today that there's a Christmas tree with a bunch of red uh, postcards on it. That's our Christmas angel tree. Uh, that's a chance for, for us to come alongside some, some families in the community that are in need of help, especially kids. And so just think about it this way when you're thinking, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. Actually, behind every card is a child who matters to Jesus. So that's actually what you're called to do. So go grab one. Whether one as a family or one for every member of your family, this is what we do. Okay, so quit making excuses and go grab one and your whole family will be enriched by it. Also on the inside of the GPS, you'll see that congratulations and condolences are in order. Let me share some of those with you because we're the body of Christ and when one celebrates, we all celebrate and when one mourns, we all mourn. So we wanna remember the family and friends of Donna Jean Ehrlich. She died this week. So whether you know her or not, would you lift up her family in prayer? Uh, that's what we do also as Christians. We, we stand in the gap for those who may not be able to stand for themselves. And then for the congratulations, as I read each name, would you respond in such a way that they get honored, but, but God gets all the credit for it? So Jim and Shirley Scott are celebrating their 63rd wedding anniversary, so we can give God thanks for them. <laughs> Dick and Edith Jones are celebrating number 55, we can give God thanks for them. Bob and Carolyn Wilson are celebrating number 45. Richard and Shirley Reed are celebrating number 42. And then Todd and Ibis Evans are celebrating number 39. So we can go, thanks for them. Also, uh, two more. Uh, we have uh, Tristan uh, Delaney, who was our media director up until a few weeks ago. Uh, she and her husband, Eric, uh, gave birth to Eden this week. So little baby Eden's running, she's running around now. So we can celebrate with Tristan, so we can give God thanks for for Eden and Tristan and Eric. And then also we have our new media director who's starting today, his name is Michael Proctor. He's in the back, Michael, wave your hand. Yeah, so we welcome him. So I'll know that as you leave today, you'll wanna give him a high five and welcome him to the church because that's what we do as well. So we're so thankful that you are here. We are expecting the presence of the living Lord here. And so part of that expectation is saying hi to other people. God shows up in that. So find someone you haven't said hi to and greet them with the love of Christ. Go for it.
Y'all grab a seat for just a few moments. If you've been with us uh, for a little bit, then we're changing things up uh, a tad. We've got people coming forward who want to be baptized or to renew their baptismal vows. So we've got Gary and Cynthia, we've got Jenny, we've got uh, Kimberly, and we've got Clint. And so we'd love for them to make their way down to the front. And as they make their way down to the front, would you just give God all the honor and glory? And plus, it's kind of scary walking down, so that'll be encouraging to them. All right, so y'all can just line up right here out front. One of the, one of the big things that's, that I love, love, love about people coming forward to doing this and, and offering uh, that option is that one, we expect God to, to move in people's lives. Uh, up until about 2017, I don't know if we ever really expected God to move in people's lives, but we've been offering baptism Sundays since about 2017 about twice a year with that expectation that God's gonna move. That's actually very much a part of our heritage, that he won't just bring people to a saving knowledge, but that will be, he'll bring those of us who have been saved and have grown dry, he'll bring us to life again. And so we expect that, and uh, we're never disappointed about that. So we've got different people coming up to do different things today. So, so this is Clint, and Clint has never been baptized, and he's gonna share that story with you this morning. Uh, Gary and Cynthia, uh, actually, uh, they're gonna tell their story about last week when they were down at the Rio Grande, okay? Jenny is gonna share her story, and Kimberly, is this Kimberly? Okay, Kimberly's not here today, but uh, these three all have a compelling story, so they're all gonna share their stories in about two minutes or less. Yeah, two minutes or less, we'll see. And then I'm gonna ask them to take vows, and then we're gonna turn around and ask you to take vows and then we're just gonna have a Jesus party. Does that sound okay? Awesome. All right, this is Clint. So Clint, tell us your story and what God's been doing and what brought you here today. Well, coming to your church has been uplifting for me and thank you for that. And I just don't know if I were ever baptized and I feel like I need to do that, so thank you. Yeah, we're glad you're here. Let's give it up for Clint as he comes forward. 
And then Cynthia and Gary tell you, they're, they're, we're not really doing anything with them today. We're just celebrating with them because of what happened about a week or 10 days ago. Thank you, Wade. Um, this is my wife, Cynthia, and I'm Gary Hawkins. And uh, we went down to Big Bend uh, last Thursday, and uh, we got rebaptized in the Rio Grande River. <laughs> Uh, it was cold and, and, and very, very moving. Uh, Cynthia was baptized when she was like day four because they thought that uh, she wasn't going to make it. So uh, the doctor had the minister come in and, and baptized her. And I was baptized when I was about 12, uh, both of us down in Houston. But uh, it was a very moving experience. And we're so God, uh, glad that God gave us that uh, opportunity. Thank you. And then this is, this is Jenny. So, Jenny, glad well, you're here. I'm Jenny Terrell, and um, I have to read it because I'm not good at remembering. I was baptized and confirmed many years ago. I won't tell you how many. I was christened as a baby, baptized and confirmed as a teenager. God has blessed me in so many ways. I have felt a calling and a need to reaffirm my faith in God, our Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And thank you for this opportunity. That's good. Excellent. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Uh, so it's a really big deal. Every one of you have a story. Every one of you. And in just a little bit, I'm going to get up and preach. And, and there's really probably a pretty good chance you're not going to remember what I say, but I trust that you'll remember what they say. Because one of their stories, God's using to compel you. Yes? That's the power of story. And, and if you believe that you don't have a story, uh, that's because you haven't been around Jesus long enough and you haven't heard him speaking to you that you do have a story, because you do, okay? So we're gonna, take, we're gonna offer them vows, okay? They're gonna be looking up on this screen. Y'all are gonna be looking at this screen and we're gonna kind of walk through this thing together because we're the body of Christ, okay? So brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are incorporated into God's, uh, into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. And all this is offered to us without price. So on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, Clint and Cynthia and Gary and Jenny, uh, I ask you all, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? If you do say, I do. I do. Awesome. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist uh, evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you do, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If you do, say, I do. Wonderful. And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's Holy Church and serve as Christ representatives in the world, if you will say, I will. I will. Yeah, that's a, that's a really big deal. Uh, we're, we're not just independent contractors, we do it as a part of the body of Christ and what we talk about around here is that the church is God's idea. Christ is the head and we play follow the leaders. So we, we live out this faith within this community. So now we're gonna turn the tables on you all. Now you get to take vows, okay? These are really, really important and a really big deal. So, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If you do, say, we do. We do. All right, so actually, this is, a, this is an occasion for you to re-up. You just took a vow that you are renewing your commitment. Don't run past that. Let's take it seriously. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? If you will, please respond in the following way. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the examples of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. So uh, before we go any further, uh, thank you, by the way, for taking that vow. Now, with that being said, pull out your GPS, and there's a pen in front of you in the pew, or you may just want to take out your phone, uh, whatever you will take notes on and remember. You just took a vow that you were going to pray for these people, 
And since you didn't write down their names, I doubt very seriously you're going to. We're people of action. Write down their names and let's pray for them. So let me tell you what their names are again because you are the body of Christ and you just took vows in his holy place that you were gonna come alongside them. So I'm gonna help you along on this a little bit, okay? We don't just lift up empty phrases. We put action behind it. So this is Clint. So write down Clint's name. Yeah. And then you've got Cynthia. And then you have Gary. And then you have Jenny, G-I-N-N-Y. G-I-N-N-Y. And I love that as soon as I said, Clint, a lot of you put your head down and started writing that. I love that. That's who we are as the body of Christ. Don't you want to be a part of the body of Christ where we pray for one another? I mean, that's a, that's a huge deal. So I want to commend you all. And for those of you who didn't put your head down and write something, what's the matter? Come on now. We're here to come into the contact of the presence of the living Lord. You ain't too proud to do that. Once again, Clint. Cynthia, Gary, and Jenny. And if you have a problem writing people's names down, let's talk after the service. I'd love to visit with you about that. So I want to invite Christy, uh, one of our pastors here, to pray over the water. The water is to be a symbol of God's means of grace. So I'm gonna invite uh, Christy to pray over it, and then we're gonna administer the water to all these folks and trust that God's gonna do something. So Christy, have at it. Y'all, let's pray. Holy God, you are already doing awesome and mighty things in and through these folks. God, thank you so much for the heart you have given them to come forward, to profess their faith in you, to be changed by you, to move forward for your purposes. Thank you, God. Continue to pour out your spirit on them just as you pour out your spirit on this water. You, you are the living water. And we put our fingers through it, we feel it on our skin today, and we know that it is you on, in, and through us. Holy God, we are your children. You call us beloved. We seek now an encounter with you that is going to change us all. So God, as the words are spoken and as the water is poured, God, as, as we see you come alive on the faces of Clint, Cynthia, Gary, Jenny, give us the assurance that you, that you are active, that you are the power that guides us forth. We pray all of these things, God, in the name of Jesus, amen. Excellent. Now, Clint, you have family here, right? Yes, I'm the last of my daughters. Yeah, y'all want to come up? Yeah, we'd love for you to. So we're gonna use water and we'll move this forward so everyone can see it here. So just as God cleansed the earth in the flood and saved Noah, and just as Jesus was baptized and all those that, that came after him when he sent the disciples out to, to go forth and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you get to play a part in that long history as well. So, Clint, I'm going to place water on your head, and, and we're going to pray over you, and then everybody's going to clap and give Jesus a high five, right? Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing with you all. We're going to use water in a little different way, okay? So, I'd, like, I'd love for you to stand up where you are. Some of you may not be able to see because uh, you haven't been blessed with height back on the back row, but we'll have it on the, the video later, and you can go back and look. And so, I'm going to invite Christy to come forward because I'm going to place water on your head, and Christy's going to pray over you, Okay? All right, Clint, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
Amen. All right, let's give God thanks for Clint. And this is his wife, Carol, and his daughter. What's your name? Yeah. All right, they're going to stand right over here, and then we're going to bring, why don't you grab that microphone, Christine? All right, Jenny, why don't you come here? Now, Jenny, you, you were baptized before, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so we're not re-baptizing you, but we're going to use the water in a way that will help you understand the, the significance of what you're doing, okay? So I'm going to place it on your head, and then Christy's going to pray for you. Okay. Okay? All right. Jenny? Uh, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in Jenny, and uh, Lord, we pray that, that you will renew her in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Holy God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, move in your daughter, change her heart, draw her nearer to you, baptize her with the fire of your passion and your purpose. Let her leave out of this place a new creation fueled by all that you are. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And let's give God thanks for Jenny. Thank you. All right. And Cynthia and Gary, uh, we're, we're, uh, you were already in the Rio Grande, right? Right. And it, was it clean and pristine water? No? A little muddy. A little muddy? Okay. Well, we're going to pray for you anyway. Okay? So Christy's going to pray for you. And we're thankful for what the Lord's doing in and through you. Holy God, we are, we are so incredibly thankful for what you are already doing and the fact that we get to step in and do it with you. God, we just pray that your Holy Spirit continues to pour out on this precious son and daughter of yours, that you continue to move in them, transform them, empower them, embolden them, give them courage to go out under your power for your purpose. God, keep doing what you are already so clearly doing. Touch their hearts, touch their lives for your glory. Amen. Amen. All right, as they make their way back to the seats, let's give God thanks. Awesome. As you remain standing, we're going to sing a, another song, and then we'll head into the sermon. After the service, I'm going to invite all of them to go toward the back, so as you leave today, you can tell them congratulations and give them a hug, but God is worthy to be praised. Amen? Let's continue singing.
All right, as you remain standing, let me, let me pray for you, okay? As you remain standing. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and you are worthy to be praised. And Lord, we want more of you in every way, shape, and form. So Lord, whether it's through the earthquake or through the fire or through the wind or through the gentle whispers, Lord, have your way in every way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As you remain standing, don't sit down yet, I wanna share with you the word of the Lord. And at the end of it, I'll say, this is the word of God for the people of God, and that's when you all will say, thanks be to God. So this comes from the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 19. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. This is to Elijah. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. So Thanksgiving is coming up, Christmas is coming up, money's about to be spent, travel arrangements are about to be made, spending time with people you share DNA with is about to be executed. And I use that word intentionally. Okay, so we're about to be spending some time with some people we don't normally spend time with. We're gonna be traveling and doing things we don't normally do. Uh, the stresses of of Thanksgiving and Christmas and the end of the year with taxes we have to pay and planning for the new year and all this stuff is going on and yet you come here today and we're telling you that we expect you to come into contact with the presence of the living God. There's a reason for that. It's because we don't worship the things that we have to do, we worship the one who gets us through the things that we have to do. That's why we focus on that. It's really easy to focus on those things but we are the people of God, and we're not called to focus on those things. We're focused on the one who leads us through those things. So uh, we've been going Old Testament for the last several weeks as we've been focusing on what it means to encounter the presence of the living God. And I, I want to remind you, for those of you who may have come in a little bit later, uh, forgotten what we talked about earlier, every pew that you are sitting in has been prayed over and anointed with oil with the expectation that God's going to do something in and through you. That's our expectation. And the reason that we have that expectation is that there's a long history of God's people encountering the God of great expectations, God himself. That even in the midst of, of the earthquake and the fire and the wind and even the whisper, God shows up. So as we talk about Elijah today, some of you may not have ever heard a sermon on Elijah. You may not have ever even heard of Elijah or it may have been a long time, but we're gonna focus on three things with Elijah that'll help us understand this encounter with the presence of God even as we go into this busy season. And, and there, there, there are three things I want you to keep in mind. The, the first one is this, the tension we have when we are playing both sides. Everyone say playing both sides. Yeah, or we're gonna get into that, but playing both sides. The second thing we're gonna focus on is what it means to be faithful not fearful. Can you say that again? Be faithful and not fearful. You might want to write this stuff down. The Lord might speak to you through it or in spite of it. And the last thing about Elijah's story that'll help us understand the presence of God is the understanding of self-doubt and depression. Can you share that with me? Yeah, yeah. Encountering the presence of the living God even in the midst of self-doubt and depression, okay? So if we wanna go old school, we gotta go back to the Old Testament. So that's 1 Kings. Uh, we may not spend a lot of time in 1 Kings, but, but here's, here's the helicopter version of, of Elijah. Elijah is a prophet, and think about a prophet this way. If you're gonna throw a Christmas party for your friends and for your neighbors, you are not going to invite a prophet to show up. The reason you're not gonna invite a prophet to show up because a prophet is the mouthpiece for God. The prophet and God have a direct connection. God speaks to the prophet, through the prophet, on behalf of God's people. And so if you invite the prophet to your party, the prophet might just say, hey, what do you have in that frozen drink machine? 
The prophet may also say, why are you spending time in the corner backstabbing people? Just be people of grace. The prophet may also show up to your party and go, man, y'all are focused on the wrong things. You can have a good time without getting drunk on wine. The prophet's gonna say, get drunk on the Holy Spirit. So the prophet is not someone that you're gonna invite to your party because the prophet's job is to make sure that God's people stay in alignment with what God is calling them to do. If you start going out to the edges, the prophet's gonna call you back. So there's a king of, of Israel at the time, and, and Israel is not necessarily the geographical nation, it's just the people of God, a guy by the name of Ahab. And Ahab is leading God's people in such a way that they're not really staying in alignment with God's will. So God sends Elijah to Ahab and says, man, you gotta get your stuff squared away. And Ahab doesn't really like hearing that, nor would any of us like hearing that. So Elijah goes to Ahab and he encounters a guy named Obadiah. Obadiah is like his chief of staff. Okay, here's where we pick up the story. So Obadiah went to meet King Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah, and when he saw Elijah, he said to him, is that you, you troubler of Israel? So at the very beginning, the king Ahab is looking upon one of God's prophets and going, oh, it's him again. Man, he really kills the buzz in the room, doesn't he, guys? And so the king of Israel, who God has in that spot, is looking at someone else that God has appointed to be a prophet, and they're not on the same page. He's looking at Elijah and going, man, you, you just kill the mood in the room. And causing him a trouble. It's kind of throwing shade at him, going, man, you just cause all kinds of problems. But then here's what Elijah does. So he's, he's not going into a very welcoming environment. So Elijah says this, I have not made trouble for Israel, which again is God's chosen people. Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. So he just kind of puts it back and go, hey, you're the king and you've messed things up, not me. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the Baals. Now the Baals, not the bells, but the Baals are, are this, these gods with a little g that God's people have actually started worshiping. Now, God's people know that there's only one God with a capital G, but God's people have a tendency, and we're the, we're the, we follow the long line of this of our ancestors. Look, as God's people who've been saved, who've been redeemed, who've been told that God created us for something more than we would settle for, we also have a tendency to follow that which is new and shiny and makes us feel good about ourselves. It's like a warm blanket. And one of the appealing things about Baal and some of the other gods with a little g, even though they were not real, what appealed people to the gods with a little g is that they had such human-like tendencies. They had their frailties also. But they were someone that we could worship because you know they were just like us. But God's chosen people said, oh, y'all gotta hold up. You're just worshiping a vapor. These, these things are not even real. Worship the one true God. And it was sometimes difficult. And God's people have a tendency to fall into that trap over and over again. Not following the one true God, but the thing that makes us feel good about ourselves. And so Elijah says, now summon the people from all over Israel. So he's talking about God's people, you and me, to Mount Car uh, Carmel. And that's the place where the prophets of Baal thought was their, their location. And bring the 450 prophets to Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. And Jezebel was the queen. Okay, so Ahab, king of Israel, his queen was Jezebel. She's, she's dining with the enemy. You follow me? So they're, they're, they're double-minded. Really what's going on is they're playing both sides. God's people are playing both sides. And so Ahab sent word throughout all of Israel and assembled the prophets at Mark Caramel. And Elijah went before the people and said, now get this, how long will you waver? Everyone say waver. Waver means to teeter-totter. How, how long will you play both sides? Uh, between two opinions. If the Lord is God, follow him. But if, the, if Baal is God, follow him. And then get this last part. But the people said what? Oh, man wavering between two opinions or playing both sides. Now, we're, we're, we weren't in that day with Elijah, but we can get that, can't we? Uh, about playing both sides. 
uh, we'll, we'll declare with our lips that we love the Lord, we follow the Lord, uh, we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. That's a pretty big deal that Jesus said to do. But, but really, we're, we're not really intentional of seeking after what the Lord wants us to do. Uh, we we want to be blessed by God. This is God's people tendency, all right? We want to be blessed by God, but, but we really, really want to play both sides of it. We want to keep our options open. One of the things I told the early service, and, and y'all probably don't deal with this same thing, okay? So I'm just going to say it, and maybe it'll hit on some people. Maybe it will not, okay? So we want God to bless us, and, and we want him to, to restore our marriages, so to speak. We, we want him to bring peace to our household. We want him to bless our income. We want to make sure that there's no disease whatsoever in our bodies or the bodies of our loved ones. We, we, we really want God to save us from any struggle whatsoever. But at the same time, we're not really seeking after him because we spend our time focusing on other things. So one of the things I told the early group was this, that, that we have 52 hours a week, I'm sorry, 52 hours a year here as the body of Christ. I, I think I mentioned this a week or two ago also. We have 52 hours a year together as the body of Christ. Think about that. 52 hours a year. That's if you come every weekend. Which studies show that even the most committed people, y'all may be here two or three times a year. And some of us are like, uh, maybe, uh, I'm sorry, two or three times a month. And others of you are like, well, I'll be here once a month, maybe. Okay, so you got 52 hours a year to focus together as the body of Christ on who God is and who we are. But how many, how many hours do you spend a week listening to the TV about the stuff that's going on in Washington? How many, how many radio programs are you listening to with your favorite commentator, whether they are on the left or the right, about all of this swamp stuff in Washington, D.C. I think the prophet Elijah would come back and go, look, man, you're wavering. If you've only got 52 hours a year with the Lord and you're spending almost 40 hours a week focusing on stuff that you have no control over in Washington, it sounds like you're, you're wavering. You're between two opinions, you're, you're not sure what it means other than you're going to play both sides because what ends up influencing is what you spend your time doing. You know more about what Sean Hannity has to say about things than what Jesus has to say about things. You know more about what Trump is saying from his tweets than you know about what Jesus is saying. And just to be fair, even those over on the left, I can't think of who those commentators might be at this time. Rachel Maddow? I don't know. But you know more about what they say than you know what Jesus says. And the prophet Elijah would come back and go, hey, you're playing both sides. You really, want, you really want God to bless you, then where are you putting your attention? You, you, really wanna, you really wanna understand the robustness of what God's created you to do? Well, he's already given you the answer. Love God and love others. For every hour or minute you spend focusing on the junk in Washington that you cannot control, how about you spend an equal amount of time getting into the word? How about you spend an equal amount of time actually praying for your husband and your wife and your kids? How about you spend an equal amount of time praying for your church to be everything that it needs to be? How about you spend an equal number of time getting out of your huddle and going serve someone who is in need? See, see you're, you're wavering between two opinions. And God comes back and says, man, this, this is pretty clear. Just go. Jesus loves you, yes. Now love someone else and Go. And we're making every excuse in the book not to do it. And Elijah comes back and goes, come on now. You're created for more than that. So this whole tension of playing both sides, I think we can identify with that. But then I also want us to, to focus on the story of Elijah, what it means to be faithful and not fearful. So at this time, he calls the people of God together and he calls the prophets of Baal together and says, okay, look, guys, prophets, uh, we're each gonna get a bull. Just me, by myself, and the Lord, I got a bull. And you 450 so prophets of Baal, you get a bull also. You spend all the time that you want praying to your God and call down on him and whoever brings fire from heaven, that is the one true God. And Elijah's going, yeah, how long is this gonna take? Because y'all are just talking to the wind. This isn't ever gonna happen. So they said, game on, we're gonna do this. So what's happened is 
they started early in the morning. The prophets of Baal, they were dancing around. They were calling out to Baal to bring fire from heaven. And at noon, Elijah starts taunting. I love this. So at noon, Elijah began to taunt them. And he says to the prophets of Baal, shout louder. Everyone say that out loud. Yeah, that's pretty good. He said, surely he is a God. Perhaps he is deep in thought. And actually, if you look back to the original language, Elijah's really saying, hey, maybe he's using the bathroom. That's really what he's saying. He's taunting, all right? Maybe he's using the bathroom, or he's busy, or he's traveling. Maybe he's sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder, and they slashed themselves with swords and spears as was their custom. That wasn't the custom of God's people, but these were the prophets. And they were trying to do anything they could to get this God to wake up. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for evening sacrifice. But get this, there was no response. No one answered, and no one paid attention. And then Elijah said to all the people, to all of God's people, after they'd witnessed a full day of this, where they had been wavering between two opinions. He called them together and almost in a whisper said, come to me. And they came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been turned, torn down. So Elijah, even in the face of great public opinion, he was faithful, not fearful. In the face of, of great calamity amongst God's people, he was faithful, not fearful. And maybe for us, even in the midst of our family who doesn't want to hear about Jesus and whom you're dreading going to spend time with this because they have really strong opinions about faith, politics, and money, and they'll talk about it all at the dinner table, it, it, your call is to be faithful, not fearful. But that doesn't mean that you're a jerk. That doesn't mean you taunt. I love Elijah's story, but that doesn't mean you taunt. What it does mean is that you're faithful because you know whom you serve. And God is ready to move. To be faithful instead of fearful. Now, now when, we, when we think ab about this in our in our lives, we've got to figure out where the rubber meets the road in our own personal lives, maybe at the dinner table, maybe in our walk with Christ, with our spouse. Maybe we have an unbelieving spouse or maybe we have a spouse that we're feeling like we have to drag along. Ugh. They're kind of like dead weight going, come on now, you can do this. And you feel like you're dragging them along and you want to just give up and go, I'm, I fear this is never going to happen. And God calls you to be faithful the God that we serve is not by sight, but by faith. That as we plug away day after day after day, not based on our faithfulness, but God's desires, he will bring about what God wants to bring about. It's the same thing with the church, y'all. Look, I'm, I mentioned earlier that I'm of the full belief that the church is God's idea, Christ is the head, and we play follow the leader. And when we, are, when we are living faithfully instead of fearfully, there's no telling what God wants to do through his church. This isn't a social club. It's not a country club. It's not a group of like-minded people. Man, this is the church of the living God. It is his idea. Christ is the head and we play follow the leader. And when it's full of full people, uh, faithful people, there's no telling what God's gonna do. It's, it's when God's people who, perhaps when you join the church, uh, either as a partner at one of our partner dinners or maybe you came up a long time ago and stood up at the front of the church. Look, the, the question was asked of you, will you support the church with your prayers? And you said, yes. When's the last time you prayed that God would fully encompass his church and you? You also said that you would support the church with your presence. And you're like, yes, I will be there. And it's good to see some of y'all. It's been a while. And to be present also when there's stuff that we do outside of Sunday mornings. Yeah, you said you were going to be here, but you actually live fearful, not faithful. Also, when you, said, you joined the church, you said you were going to support the church with your giving. And you're like, yes, I'm going to commit to do that. Oh, man, no, you're not. You're, you're letting someone else do it. You're letting someone else pray for you. You're letting someone else be present for you. You're letting someone else give for you. Because you live a life of scarcity, not fullness. 
And the prophet Elijah would probably come to you and say, wake up, O sleeper. God's created you for more. And you also said, I'm gonna support the church with my service. And, and you said, yes, I will do that. And we expected you to do that. But you're living fearfully instead of fully because you expect someone else to hold the door open on Sunday mornings. And you expect someone else to go out into the community and make a difference. You, there's, there's a part of you you're, where you're wavering between two opinions and you wanna be blessed, you wanna feel the fullness of God, but you don't wanna go all the way. And the prophet Elijah comes back and says, listen to me. Listen to me, we believe in the one true God who created you for more than what you have settled for. Quit settling and be part of this community of faith that's leaning forward. We're, we're on the tip of our toes, not on the back of our heels. Because it's a lot more fun when we're leaning in than when we're leaning back. See, we're called to be faithful, not fearful. And Elijah comes to you today and says, wake up, because you're living half empty lives. So then, here's what happened. He calls the people together, and then this. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, this is the God of history, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, and answer me so that these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. And then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood and the stones and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. And when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and they cried. And what did they say? Okay, so the fire fell down, everything was consumed, and they fell prostrate, and what did they cry out and say? Say it again. Oh, come on now. Y'all say it like you're saying it from the stands. Look, you're on the field. Elijah has just called you forward and the, the fire of God has called down and you were to call out and cry out, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And man, what a great worship service that would be every Sunday morning if we got together and we cried out like we actually expected it and we believed it, not like, oh, Lord, oh man, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. I don't want people to think I'm too crazy. Man, you're wavering between two opinions. You're either for the Lord or you're against it. And if you can't shout the name of the Lord in church, then where are you going to call out to him? So let me say this again. They fell prostrate and cried what? Lord, Lord, oh man, y'all just stepped into being weird. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, I don't know if I signed up for this. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did because... As the Lord fills us here, it overflows us out there. And if you're too scared about that, hang on. We're going. <laughs> Last thing is this. Uh, even Elijah, after he had those God moments, man, he ran away in fear. Jezebel, you know, the one who kind of was playing with the enemy, uh, she said, hey, uh, by the end of the day, you're done, dude. You're dust. She didn't like what he had done to the prophets. And so even Elijah, after he'd encountered the presence of the living God, he ran out of self-doubt and depression. And for those of you who struggle with self-doubt and depression, I want you to, to hear this last part because even in the Old Testament, it talks about it. Uh, guys in the back, we're gonna skip to the second slide. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. So fire had just come down from heaven. Elijah ran, and the Lord finds him even after he's run away. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was what? Not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the earthquake, but the Lord was not where? Remember, fire had just come down from heaven. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was what? Yeah. And after the fire came what? And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face. Isn't that what we do when we are depressed? 
We isolate ourselves, we cover up, we wanna remove ourselves from people. That's what Elijah's doing. For those of you who think that God doesn't have a word for you because you're suffering through depression and self-doubt, the Lord has a word for you today. You can try to hide yourself in a cave, but the Lord's gonna find you. And when the Lord finds you, he's gonna call your name, maybe not through earthquakes and maybe not through fire, maybe not through wind, but through a gentle whisper because his spirit testifies to your spirit that you are a beloved child of his. There's a word for somebody in here today who needs to hear that because what has become your God is your depression. But the God that we believe in is even stronger than the doubt and depression that you may find yourself slipping into. So he called out to Elijah, and when Elijah heard it, he pulled back his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? You see, Elijah had an encounter with the presence of the living God, not just the awesome fire that fell through heaven, from heaven, but through the spirit witnessing to his spirit. That's our hope as Christians, y'all. That as we are saved and we are redeemed, we can have that knowledge and assurance that even today, when we don't know how to stand up to the enemy, even today when we find ourselves, really, when we come before God, we are of two minds. That even today when we wanna go and we wanna hide, and there may be somebody online today who's hiding, would have joined in with us. That even in those moments, the guy can be in the earthquake and the fire and the wind, but also that whisper that's calling out to you right now, calling you by name, and here's what he's saying to you. Come home. Come home. I've prepared a place for you. You have nothing to fear. Come home. Maybe so. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. shall we gather at the table and celebrate communion? For those who are helping today, would you come on forward? And we've got the kids that are coming in as well. So parents and grandparents, help your family find where you are. We rejoice that every Sunday in this worship service, we get to celebrate Holy Communion. And we rejoice in it because it's a gift given to us by our resurrected Savior. So we remember that on the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he took a loaf of bread, gave, th gave thanks to God, broke the bread, passed it amongst his disciples and said, take and eat each of you. This is my body which is broken for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you take it, do it in remembrance of me. He then took the cup gave thanks to God, passed it amongst his disciples and said, take and drink each of you. This is my blood which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. It's often as you take it, do it in remembrance of me. So although we are many, we share the one body and one blood of Jesus Christ and praise God from whom all blessings flow. I wanna pray for you and then at the end we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. We'd love for you to join in with us. If you're not familiar with it, it'll be up on the screen behind me and we'd love for you to say it out loud with us. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for who you are and we thank you that your spirit testifies to our spirits. Now, Lord, we pray that you will transform and make new as we encounter you through this means of grace, of communion. We pray blessing upon this bread and cup that they will be for us your real tangible presence and that you will lead us to life and life abundantly. Lord, as we come before you, we do so in thanks and praise and humility using the words that your son, our savior, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So you're gonna see that there's stations up front there's also stations in the back when you come forward. If you'll come with your hands cupped like that, you'll have a piece of the bread placed in the palm of your hand. Take that bread, dip it in the cup, place it in your mouth. If you lose the bread somewhere, we'll give you another one. Don't worry about it. But at the railing, uh, we encourage you to spend some time praying, either with a loved one or by yourself or with your family. If you need one of the pastors to come alongside and pray for you, then at the railing, once again, put your hands out and we'll come alongside of you. 
Uh, otherwise, we're not going to bother you. Some of us just need the quiet time. But this is your time in God's time. The Lord calls out to you in your cave. Will you come forth? Let's come and feast.
What a beautiful name it is. I, I couldn't help but think this week how I was listening to the radio and I heard a story of a woman facing persecution who as she was being chased by people who had just murdered her family, she was being told to submit to this other religion. She proclaimed the name of Jesus Christ. They would shout at her, you need to praise this God. And she would shout back, Jesus, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Whatever you face this week, may that be what you proclaim, that the Lord, he is God. Would you say it with me? The Lord, he is God. Praise be to God now and forever. Go in peace.